he won the Engstrom Science Award. He, he actually worked for, uh, was a colleague of Walter Cronkite's. He consulted for NASA, where his picture still hangs reverently in the halls of Houston, the Ames Research Center, and lots of other locations around NASA. People actually have been uh, said to salute the photograph in NASA as they walk by. Richard C. Hoagland. <laughs> good morning, Art. Hey, Richard. Uh, welcome back. Well, thank you. I had a good time in Paris. You know who else went to Paris to take a rest from their, their heavy labors? Who? Ben Franklin and Thomas Jefferson. Really? Yes. Well, it is such a complete change of worlds from, you know, the desert where I live to Paris, which is old and uh, filled with statues and, you know, the feeling of old, that it's kind of fun. It's just getting away, you know. And when Graham's new book comes out, Graham Hancock, yes. uh, together with Robert Baval, we're going to find out some very remarkably intriguing things about Paris. Really? Yep. There's some major surprises in Paris that are connected to all the stuff that we talk about. No kidding. In fact, up to and including Mars. But we're going to have to wait till they come out with the book because I don't want to, you know, steal their thunder. All right. We've got an awful lot to cover tonight. And the first thing I want to ask you about, I have been bitching for two wow. weeks now. Um, I've been getting story after story after story, Richard, that the Japanese, well, they've already launched a probe to Mars, and they're talking about a manned mission to Mars. And when I heard about the probe to Mars, I said to myself, what the hell are they doing? We've sent probes. The, Russian, uh, the Russians have sent probes. Now, why would they spend very scarce, um, undervalued yen with the Asian crisis going on, to send a probe to Mars to duplicate, no doubt, what we have done or the Russians have done. Why are they starting a space program? You mean an interplanetary space program? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, these are all exquisitely interesting questions, and the most profound question no one is asked because they're not into the arcana of spaceflight the way some of us are, the real mystery art is not why they're going, but why they're going early. It's kind of like that joke about the drunk, you know, who loses his keys, oh. and he's searching around under the, uh, the street lamp, and the cop comes by, and he says, uh, what are you doing? And the guy says, I'm looking for my keys. He says, where'd you lose them? Well, over there, and he points out in the dark. And the cop says, uh, well, why are you looking under the light? He says, well, the light's better over here. <laughs> <laughs> the Japanese have launched art five months early. Really? You can't get to Mars until December. The spacecraft is not on its way to Mars right now, tonight, at this instant. It is somewhere circling the Earth. In other words, they've got it circling the Earth, waiting for the window to fire it off. Exactly. Why? Which has never been done in the entire history of any space program of any nation on this planet. Exactly. Why would you want to risk, for example, the possibility of a collision in Earth orbit with some piece of junk or something? Well, think what's going to happen in November. There's been an alert in Aviation Week and in a lot of the major satellite manufacturers. We're going to go through a meteor shower. Oh, I know. And everyone is forecasting pretty hairy stuff for yep. the communication satellite. You may go off the air because I know. I know. one little grain of sand yep. impacting at 26 miles per second, which is the parabolic velocity of meteors at the Earth's orbit... Would ruin the day of one of my satellites. Would definitely give you a bad hair day. So why would the Japanese launch and then wait in Earth orbit? They're in this parking orbit going around and, and around, around and around. around every 90 minutes or so for five months because they can't launch out of Earth orbit on the right geometry to get to Mars until December. Never has been done. And, and in all the discussions that I've heard, you know, and we, we've never talked about it because it was so mind-boggling that I kept looking for... For an explanation, I have been unable as of tonight to come up with any rational explanation. The, the best thing that I can propose is something that Ron Nix, one of our geologists, proposed to me you know, a couple days ago. He says, well, Dick, it's obviously the physics. <laughs> they know something hyperdimensional that you don't. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's almost as good as any other because it makes no sense. Now, there is one possibility which is so 
astonishing that I, I kind of hesitate even to broach it. Oh, broach it. But suppose you kind of had a probability estimate that your launch site might not be there when you need to launch. Japan is very earthquake prone, right? Yes. The safest place, if you have to go to Mars, for reasons that we can get into later in the morning, would be to park it in space waiting for when you can, can send it on its way. If you may not think your launch site will be there when you need to launch. That's the only thing I can come up with that makes any rational sense. And even that is so amazing because it indicates that somebody thinks maybe Japan is in for a very rough ride. Um, so you're suggesting they may know that their launch site may not even be there or might be in rubble? Well, might be, shall we say, in jeopardy. Remember Hurricane Andrew when it was heading for Cape Canaveral? Yes. And how they battened down the hatches and put the Mars Observer on backup power and all that? Yes. Well, Cape Canaveral was not earthquake prone. But imagine that you had Cape Canaveral on an island where earthquakes are becoming increasingly severe and are changing depth, you know, under, underground in the, in the mantle, coming up toward the, uh, toward the crust. Right. You might, if you knew something about the trend curve of this thing we all call Earth changes, yeah. and we're predicting out the model, that there might be a reasonable probability that a severe quake could so damage your launch site that you could not launch on time. In which case, then the estimate and the calculation would make perfect sense to put it in Earth's orbit where it is safe if that's what is being projected. Or safer, I should say. In other words, something is really extraordinary, not just about the Japanese interest in Mars, but the fact that they have to go, and they've launched five months early. All right, but even all of that said, Richard, why go to Mars to duplicate, spend a very scarce ah. yen on stuff that we've already done? What, where, what are the possibilities there? Um, small to zero. I mean, this data, as you know, is shared freely and has been shared freely even during the height of the Cold War. We were sharing our space data with the Russians, and they were sharing yeah, their Venus exactly. data with us. And Don't they trust our photographs? Well, that does raise an interesting set of ideas, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Now, uh, one of our, our listeners faxed me a couple of days ago, and I, I don't remember their names, but uh, someone heard a news story, apparently from Japan, either the day of the launch or a day after the launch. You know, it was kind of a translation over the... Japanese video of the launch. Yeah. And the the announcer was talking about the reasons for going to Mars was to study the atmosphere and the underground structure. And these people very intriguingly thought that might imply artificial structures. I, in fact, think it's probably a poor translation of under, uh, in other words, subterranean mascons and gravity variations and all that, because you can get a lot of data from just mapping the orbit in terms of underground uh, uh, concentrations of various kinds. And our own spacecraft are, in fact, looking at those kinds of gravity anomalies to refine the map of the, 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 the lower mantle structure or the upper mantle structure of Mars. So I don't think that that translation really implied what they thought it might imply, but again, the whole idea of the Japanese trying to go and duplicate what we've already done, I mean, why not go to Mercury or, or you know, go to Titan or someplace that we haven't gone? Why go to Mars? Well, if I were Richard Hoagland, <laughs> I'd say because they want the photographs and information that they don't think we've made public and haven't given to them either. Well, let me give you another data point. On, on that side of the ledger. Otherwise, uh, otherwise, why do it? It's very expensive. Look, we're at a break point. If you're going to give me another data point for the ledger, hold it until after the break, all right? And do. All right, stay right there. Hmm. Why are the Japanese doing just don't make any sense? Anyway, this is Coast to Coast AM.